Good morning to a brand new day. Time to learn and games to play. Learning things is so much fun. Learning is good for everyone. Hello, early learners. Welcome back to the art room where we're studying different artists each day and how they might have painted a snowman. Let's start out with our hello song. I'll say hello to a few people and then we'll get started. Ready? It's a song that goes like this. Hello, nice to see you, everyone. Hello, nice to see you, everyone. Hello to you, hello to you, hello to you, hello to me. Nice, hello, nice to see you, everyone. All righty, and I'm saying hello to Mrs. Damian's class at Hamilton Elementary, where the TK children are doing art with me each day. And today I'm doing a special hello to two J names. We've got Julian and Jaylee today. Glad to have you here. I hope that you folks, as you finish your snowman or any other artwork, send it here to the station. And if you send it along with your home address, someone in the PBS studio will send you an activity book. It may not be one of these two. We have a whole stack of them, but you will get something in the mail for a thank you for being a loyal viewer. Let me set these aside. And let's talk about today. We are talking about Yayoi Kusama, who we met in the fall. And she was famous for her polka dotted pumpkins. Well, I found a girl dancing in a museum, and this, she is larger than life, and she is covered with polka dots. Here is our Yayoi Kusama wearing her polka dot outfit. And she is from Japan. She was that Japanese artist who sometimes was called the princess of polka dot. And she made lots of different kinds of art, paintings and sculptures. And she would do performances and installations. And they had that one thing in common, polka dots. Now, Yayoi is instantly recognizable. And they've become pieces of art, and they're popular with people. I know someone that worked here tried to get one for her daughter, and I think she got her a pin with polka dot pumpkin. And she is one of the most famous living female artists today. So what we're going to do, she's not in this book that we're using by Amy and Greg Newbold. I brought her back because I liked her so much, and I thought it would be fun to make a polka dot snowman. So let me show you how I'm going to do it. I like to do printmaking. It takes some time and it takes a few materials that I'm not sure everyone has. So if that's true, I'm going to show you a few things that you can do to make polka dots. Let me bring my board up here and we'll sing if Yayoi painted a snowman. If Yayoi painted a snowman, how would that snowman look? Would it look like her other work? Let's just take a look, and I will show you the one that I already made so you get an idea of what I'm talking about. It still has three different circles, a large lower circle, a medium-sized center circle, and a smaller top circle. Each of them have different polka dots on them. Now the paper that I used had polka dots. It was wrapping paper. But we're going to make some polka dots on ones that we're using today, just in case you don't have wrapping paper. Let me set this down and get my white paper. You'll notice I made it really small because it is going to be um, a little hard to do so many polka dots in the amount of time we have. So what I'm going to do is first use my pencil and get myself my small, medium, and large. I think I'll start with my small. My small, my medium, and my large circles. Now I'm going to cut them out and remember, I'm not cutting all around every line, just on the very outside part. When you come to another line, don't cut through. 
go up and around. I'm going around this. Don't cut to that line because I came to another pencil line, so I stopped. Oh, don't cut that one. Stop there and go down to the bottom. You'll see I made it so it could stand like this. It's not just a bust from the waist up. You can see it's starting down here, and I might put him up a little higher and maybe use some of these scraps for snow drift. But this is how we're going to print it. Let me set it aside. In order for something to print, it has to be pretty flat. So let me put this on here. Now this is just my background paper, so I'm going to set it aside. I have a paint pan, and this used to have pie in it. And I put a piece of wet paper towel in there. It wasn't wet when I put it in. I put the paper towel in, and then I got my water and I just put it on there because now I'm going to use the paints we used on the day we did Van Gogh and I'm going to paint some color on here to make it a print pad. So I paint the paint right on the wet paper towel. This is one way you can make polka dots. Let's think, how else might we make polka dots if we don't have paint and we want to make polka dots? I'm going to show you on the back of my Paper so that you get an idea. Pretend these are crayons or if you have pastels, you'll think, oh, I have pastels, I'll do that. Pastels are pretty easy to use because they are soft. And when you go to use them, they make a pretty good mark. So I'm gonna show you what I would do. I'm gonna turn it to the back where I had my um, pencil marks because that's not the side I'm working. And I can just twist my pastel and make it into a circle. And I'll put polka dots all over the middle as green polka dots. And I can just keep going around, pressing down, turning my hand side to side, pressing down and turning my hand. This makes a lot of different size polka dots, all the same size as my pastel end. And if I want to put other colors on there, I can. But what I'm going to do is do my printmaking. I brought a cork and I can put it in. You don't squish it around. You set it on the paint and you press it down. You pick it up. Ooh, better get this set up. Maybe I'll move these over because I don't need them right now. I'm doing the bottom print with big polka dots. And if some of them don't print perfectly, that's okay because it still looks like a polka dot to me. And when I get up to the middle circle, I'm going to do a different size. I might even do an overlap one, little edge of one. There's a good start to my printmaking. I'm going to set this over here on my lid so I don't get any paint on my table because you know doing, during art, you have to be careful about your surroundings and where you're doing it. This is a brand new pencil. Let me show you. And I'm using just the eraser. Notice I didn't use the pencil end. I'm using just the eraser end and I'm keeping it out of the paint except the eraser. Now watch as I print. Set down, pick up. Set down, pick up. Set down, pick up. I was going to tell you another way you could make polka dots is by using your hole punch. And if you punch a bunch of holes, you can put glue on the back of each one and just put it on your paper. And so all of your paper will have different polka dots. And you notice I'm using one color because I thought that looked kind of snazzy. I liked using one color so that my snowman was really just one color and I might put a different color scarf even though I made my original one monochromatic. Oh, let me clap that. Monochromatic. Monochromatic. Five claps, five syllables on that big word and all it means is using one color. And one color could be, um, when you mix it into a pastel, a tint. One color could be pink if I was using red, because red and white make pink. So I could do that. Now my top one, I might just use a tiny little brush 
and just touch and print. And I might use the end of the handle on my flattest one. That's what I thought I could do, is just touch. And you notice big ones are at the bottom, medium-sized ones are on the middle, and all of these little tiny dots are going to be on his face. Now, I might not be able to put enough dots to make it look complete, but I want you to see what else I'm going to do to it, and I can finish putting more dots on him later and show it to you when we gather back again next week. Because I like to bring my artwork from the week before and bring it and show you what I did to finish it up, and I'll put it on something like this so you can see. Now I have my snowman pretty well taken care of. And below on the floor, oh, remember I told you about polka dots with the hole punch? This is a hole punch. It looks like this and you just put it on paper and the holes punch out the end and you can put those on there. I have a background piece for this snowman and I'm going to put it on here and show you what else I'm going to do. Let me get my glue stick and get it on here. You notice I'm going to have to do it right on top of where I had the green because I didn't bring a paper to test it out. I just wanted you to see one other way to do the um, polka dots. So I will paste it on here, put it on, and now you know what he needs, don't you? He needs arms made out of brown paper sticks maybe, or I could make red sticks if I wanted it to be very monochromatic, but I'm using a brown, and I'll just cut out a stick by just going up to the edge, snip, snip in, snip out. And both branches don't need to be the same, but I'm doing this in a quick way so that you can see what I would do. But you know how to make a snowman's arms just using some extra paper. I'm putting my glue stick on and putting his arms out, and they can go off the edge of the paper, which is just fine. And I, of course, need his orange nose, and I taught you that yesterday with, well, actually, I think it was when we were doing Picasso, where I cut his nose out and made sure that we saw how to do this part. And I will put this on here, and I can finish up his face. Let me see how much time I have left, boys and girls. So we can finish him up. I'll put a hat on him. I will maybe add some snow drift in his eyes. But I want to tell you what to bring tomorrow. Tomorrow, if you would bring white paper, gold paint, does that give you a clue who we're going to be talking about? Gustav Klimt. Remember him in gold? And we will bring crayons and a black pen. And I will see you on tomorrow with those materials because we're going to make a snowman like Gustav Klimt's The Kiss. Remember where the two people were hugging and they used gold on their clothing? All right, I will see you tomorrow. A brand new day, time to learn and games to play. Learning things is so much fun, learning is good for everyone.